Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How are you all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra 1 and 2 class. Today we're going to be talking about quadratic inequalities. And there are two ways to solve quadratic inequalities. The first way is graphing, which we're not going to see yet today. Remember, we're going to do graphing all together the right way, step by step. So we will come back to this, I promise, OK? However, today, the second way is algebraically, and that's what we're going to learn today. We're going to learn how to solve inequalities algebraically. I chose to go this way because we just finished solving uh, quadratic equations, correct? We know how to solve quadratic equations by factoring, square root method, completing the square, quadratic formula. I don't know if you guys realize this, but you guys are, are monsters, man. You're doing really good stuff here, really complicated stuff. And I think, in my opinion, at a young age, so I think you guys are doing really, really well. Um, for anyone out there on the internet, feel good about yourself as well, because this is some good stuff. This is good math. This is not Mickey Mouse. But I'm going to make it Mickey Mouse for you today, because that's just the way we roll, right? So how we do this? Solve x squared minus 4x minus, uh, minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. First things first, let's look at what this is really telling us, and let's learn how to analyze this. This 0, they set this equal to 0, but this 0 is really y, correct? Guys, does that make sense? Because remember, when we're solving a quadratic, what are we doing? We're finding the x-intercepts, right? Remember what we talked about? We're finding the x-intercepts, right? And what's the y-value when x is for the Right, y is 0. Thank you. OK. So before we do anything, I like to read from the y. In this particular case, y is less than or equal to, right? Remember that. y is less than or equal to the function. That's going to be extremely important in a few minutes. OK? So always read from the 0. Not from the function, but from the 0. Why, Mr. Morrow? Because that 0 is y. We're reading from the y. So step 1. Write the inequality in standard form and set it equal to 0. Wait a second, Morrow. What are you talking about, equal to 0? We have an inequality. Yes, I know. We're going to solve this algebraically. So my first step, it's already in standard form. I'm pretty lucky there. Equal to 0. That's it. I'm going to set it equal to 0. Why do we do this? Because you guys already know how to solve equations. So step two, solve the equation. Let's factor this bad boy. Thank you, my brothers. x minus 5, x plus 1. So x equals 5 and um, negative 1. So that's step 2. No, it's not 1 and negative 5. It's, negative five, it's positive 5 and negative 1. Remember the zero product property, my brother? You got to set x minus 5 equal to 0 and x plus 1 equal to 0. So x will equal 5 and negative 1. Does that make sense, my man? Thank you, sir. Everyone with me so far, right? Pretty simple? OK, now. This looks confusing, but I promise you, it's not. Plot the solutions on a real number line. Remember, a number line is a straight line, OK? It's not the x and y axis. That's a coordinate plane, or a Cartesian plane, or an x and y axis. This is plot the solutions on a real number line and test each interval. I'm going to show you what that means in order to find the sign of your original inequality. Remember how I told you to write this down first thing? If y is less than the function, is y going to be positive or negative? Negative, right? That makes total sense, right, guys? Keep that in mind. So I'm looking for, in this particular case, remember, y is less than or equal to, less than or equal to the function. So we're looking at negatives, OK? You with me? OK. 
What are these test intervals? I know that my solutions are 5 and negative 1. You feel me? There are three intervals that I have here. I can go to the left of negative 1. This is a possible solution range. I can go between 1 and 5. This is a possible solution range. And I can go from 5 and greater. That is a third solution range. You have to do this each time. The beauty of it, it's always the same. And I mean always the same. It's less than the value, in between the values, and greater than the last value. So always going to be the same. Yes, sir? It's less than or equal to. Didn't I put a solid circle here? Solid circle means that it's included. So that would be a bracket. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Are, you, are you with me? Yeah. No, but what is there to figure out? It's the beginning of this solution. It says clearly greater than or equal to. Oh. You have an equal to. So that is a bracket, right? Okay, guys, we can't forget the basics because that's going to hurt you here. So now let's test each range and see if it is going to make this work. What is a value that is less than negative 1? Okay, so for test zone 1, we're going to put negative 2. What is a value between negative 1 and 5? I would use 0. Very good. Test zone 2, we're going to use 0. What is a value larger than 5? Test zone, test zone 3, I'm going to use 6. 73 is larger, but that would be ridiculous. Now, now. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember that negative times a negative is a positive, and positive times a positive is a negative, and positive times a negative is a negative, and negative times a positive is a negative. Remember all of those things, because that's really important. Let's go ahead and plug in and test this negative 2. Okay? When I plug in this negative 2, I have to plug it into my original equation. All right? So my original equation was x squared minus 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. Let's see if this works. I have negative 4 squared minus 4 times negative 2 minus 5. So that's 16 plus 8 minus 5. That is going to be greater than or equal to 0, correct? Huh? Ah, wait, 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 wait. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. It's negative 2 squared. Pay attention, Mr. Morrow. So this is 4 plus 8, still going to be greater than 0. 13 minus 5 is 8. Isn't, five, isn't 8 greater than 0? Hello? Seven. seven. Yes, seven. Seven is still greater than or equal to zero, correct? Okay, so this one works. Now, um, let's test our, our second zone. When x is zero, I have zero squared minus four times zero minus five. Is that greater than zero? So again, zero squared minus four times zero minus five. That is not greater than zero. So no, that's not going to work. Okay, so this is a big fat no. And now let's test our third and final spot here, which is six. So let's do six squared, which is 36 minus 24 minus five. Is that greater than 0? Yes. 36 minus 29 is 7. 7 is greater than 0, so that works as well. So what is my solution? My solution is negative infinity to negative 1 
in union with 5 to positive infinity. Does everyone see that? That's not that bad, is it? Talk to me. That's why I'm here. Any number in between 5 and... Uh, between negative 1 and 5, you mean? No. That would not work. That would not work. Sir? Sir? Anything to the right here will work now. As long as you test one point, that means that every point to the left here will work. That's why you only have to test one point in each region. If that point works, that means every point in that region works. If that point does not work, then it doesn't work. One of these will always never work, yes. It's either going to be an or, which is one of these, or it's going to be an and in between. You're never going to have yes for all of them. If you do, you messed up. Great question. Does that make sense? It's pretty simple, right? OK. OK, let's do this. Solve each inequality. First, put into standard form. So I got negative x squared minus 3x plus 10. You never, ever want to solve with a negative in front of the x squared. So how do we get rid of that negative, my friends? Come again? Factor out a negative. Very good. So divide negative to both sides. So now I have x squared plus 3x plus 10 uh, minus 10. Wow. It must be very early in the morning today. I'm making a lot of mistakes. Sorry. What happens when you divide by a negative? You flip the sign. So now I have less than, okay? Yes. Okay. Why don't I want to have a negative? Because this negative, for graphing purposes, is very important. Because that means that the graph is going to be pointing down, and we'll explain that later. But when you're solving equations, what have we been trained to do? Do we ever solve an equation with the leading coefficient of x as a negative? We always want to make it positive. Why? It's easier. That's the simple answer. Like, for real. OK? Thank you, sir. So thank you, x plus 5 and x minus 2. Uh, wait, I uh, should have an equal there. So x equals negative 5 and positive 2. All right, let's make our little test, test values. I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. Hold on. Okay, we'll shrink that up. So I got negative 5 and 2. So I make a little number line, negative 5. I'm going to have three test zones. Now, in this case, it's greater than, not greater than or equal to. So it's an, so it's an, open, so it's an open circle. No, it is not positive 5 and negative 2. We just went over this with the last one. You have to set each of them equal to zero, please, my friends. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, everyone makes mistakes, including me. So it's an open circle, actually. You guys are above that. It's a, a parenthesis, okay, to the left, or in between 5 and 2. So this is my first. This is my second test station. Or parenthesis to the right. That's my third test station. Yes. I did do the same. I, I did everything the same in the last one. What are you talking about? I did everything exactly the same. If you want to color coordinate it, yeah, God bless you. Okay, now, my, my first test region, what is a number less than negative 6? Huh? I mean, less than negative 5, negative 6. So, so, huh? Okay, guys, let's focus. Test section 1, what is a number less than negative 5? Negative 6, not 0. Okay, so remember, we want to use the, the new and improved one, okay? The one with the, with the uh, less than. I don't want the, uh, the x to be negative here. So I've got negative 6 squared 
plus 3 times negative 6 minus 10 must be less than 0. This is 36 minus 18 minus 10. That's 36 minus 28. So it's positive 8. Is 8 less than 0? Guys, is 8 less than 0? No. So that does not work. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Next. What value do you want to pick here? 0. Yes, very good. So in this case, 0 squared plus 3 times 0 minus 10. Is that less than 0? Yes. yes. So that works. Once you know the middle works, by the way, hint, hint, that's the only one that can work then. It's either 1 and 3 or 2. Never going to be all of them. Yes. <laughs> Why is it less than? Because when I divide it by a negative 1 here, I flip the inequality sign. When you divide by a negative, you flip the inequality sign. So this one does work. Now, third test region. This way. What's a number larger than 2? 3. So 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus 10. Is that less than 0? That's 18 minus 10. Is 8 less than 0? No. So my only solution here is negative 5 to comma 2. Those are my possible solutions for x. Sir? You're a very smart person. The question was, if test, one automa if test zone 1 automatically does not work, does that mean test zone 2 automatically works? I believe yes. 99.9% .9 yes. Yes, sir? Right? Okay, yeah, exactly. If test zone 1 doesn't work and test zone 2 does work, 3 for sure will not work. Thank you, my brothers. Good, good catch. Great patterns. Okay, here. I don't have to divide this to make it positive. I just add x squared, okay? So my new equation is x squared um, plus 2x minus 24 is less than 0 because remember the function is less than 0 okay so now that's the equation I'm gonna use to test now let's solve it x squared plus 2x minus 24 equals 0 you guys are awesome x plus 6 x minus 4 so x equals negative 6 and positive 4 let's do our test zone this is 4, this is not, nah, this is negative 6, and this is 4. So again, the same thing over and over and over. This was a less than, so it's not a bracket, it's a, it's a parenthesis. I'm going to go to the left of negative 6, in between negative 6 and 4, and to the right of 4. And let's see which one of these works. Let's first try test zone 1 in green. What's a number less than negative 6? Okay, negative 7. So negative 7 squared is 49. Minus 14. Minus 24. Is that less than 0? That's 49 minus 38. No, that's going to be 11. 11 is not less than 0. So we can almost guarantee you that it's going to be between negative 6 and 4. What's a value between negative 6 and 4? We'll do it in red. 0. 0 squared is 0 plus 2 times 0 is 0. Is negative 24 less than 0? Yes, so that works. Number 3 does not work. My answer here is x is between negative 6 and 4. Any value between negative 6 and 4 is a solution. Is that making sense, my friends? Okay, let's knock these last two out and then we'll do some practice on your own with me here walking around, okay? So I got 2x squared plus 5x minus 7 is less than 0. That's the one I'm going to use. Let's set, an, uh, uh, let's set it equal to 0. So 2x squared plus 5x minus 7 equals 0. Cuban method, 2x, 2x, 
2 times negative 7 is negative 14. Uh, positive 7, negative 2. Thank you very much. You are awesome. Artificial factor. So 2x plus 7 times x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals negative 7 halves, comma, 1. Let's do a test point again, our test regions. Negative 7 halves is negative 3.5. So negative 3.5 and 1. So it's either to the right of negative, uh, to the left of negative 3.5, in between negative 3.5 and 1, or to the right of 1. Those are my test zones. Test zone 1, what is a number less than negative 3.5? Okay, remember, we're plugging it into my nice, beautiful, clean inequality that I created. <laughs> Excuse me. So negative 4. So I got 2 times negative 4 squared minus 20 minus 7. Is that less than 0? That's 1632. 32 minus 27 is 5. Is 5 less than 0? No. Let's try the, this one in here. Because you have to try them at least 2. Because what if there's a no solution and none of the test works? So you always got to test at least 2. When it's 0, I got 0 squared plus 0 minus 7. Negative 7 is less than 0, so it works. So my solution for this bad boy is negative 7 halves, comma, 1. Is that making sense? All right, and last but not least, this one's already uh, placed in proper form for you. So let's go ahead and solve it. Um, this is going to be, what, Negative 4, negative 4, right? Oh, so this is a good one. So m equals 4 in this case. So you have your 0 and you have your 4. In this case, where you only have one possible uh, x solution here, you only have two test zones. It's either less than or uh, equal or greater than or equal. So what's the value to the left of 4, less than 4? How about 0? It's, when I plug in 0, is 16 less than or equal to 0? So that does not work. To the right of it, what's a value larger than 4? 5. 5 squared is 25 minus 40 plus 16. So that's 1. Whoa. No, that's negative. No? That's 41, right? So... It doesn't work. No solution here. Oh, I'm glad I put that one up there. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. For what? For the last one? It's either less than 4 or greater than 4. M is equal to 4. So here's my 4, right? So I either go less than 4 or greater than or equal to 4. So less than 4, I put in 0. 16 is not less than 0, so this side does not work. Greater than 4, I put in 5. Okay? Um, 5 squared is 25. 25 minus 40 is negative uh, 15. Negative 15 plus 16 is 1. One is not less than zero, so neither of them worked, so there's no solution. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Okay. Scan it. Work on it. I'm going to walk around and make sure you got this. Thank you very much. Have a great day.